What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Stacks by the Numbers and today I'm diving in as per request to a company that I'm sure a few people have heard of and basically this is like an online marketplace as it shows here. Uh, the company acts as a broker and charges a commission from each booking, right? So Airbnb, ticker symbol ABNB listed here on the NASDAQ. Stock closed 87.62. Oh, excuse me. 87.62, up a little less than 2% on the day. Let's dive into the numbers. Let's see what's going on. So we're looking at a market cap of about 55 and a half billion with a PE of 36 and a half. First thing I notice is the PE, in my opinion, right? I would wait for a little bit of a better entry. Reason being, if we pull up a year to date chart, stock is down almost 50% since the ball dropped and the PE is still 36 and a half, which means at one point it was north of 70, potentially even 80. So, you know, again, just like some of the typical uh, quote-unquote new age tech companies that go public, they have an insanely overinflated valuation, have a little bit of a pump in the beginning, and then go into a massive pullback and sell off, right? So if we pull up a max chart, I mean, look at this, right? So again, market cap 55 billion. We come down here last year. Now again, I'm not knocking the growth, right? Going from two, three billion and change. Now they're up to six billion as of last year. One of the things you might notice, net income negative off of $6 billion, right? And again, this is an app, okay? So they basically have to make sure the app is working. And every time, makes a, every time someone makes a booking through their app, they earn a commission. So just by the app working, they make money every day. But they didn't make any money, right? The, this is the thing that really grinds my gears. Because I'm going to tell you what... As I said throughout uh, my past videos, right, if you're in the private sector, usually a company is valued at two and a half times yearly revenue, which means in the private sector, this company is worth $15 billion. That's not up for debate. Now, we look at the fact that you're not making money. So imagine you spend $15 billion for a business, and yes, your business reach and revenue is growing, but no matter what you do, no matter how much money you make, your net income negative. That, in my opinion, is a very, very bad business model because the most successful businesses are businesses that turn a profit, right? And it really doesn't matter at the end of the day what percentage your profit margin is, right? You can look at certain industries like um, makeup, cosmetics, right? Perfume, cologne. These items have very, very high profitability ratios. But you could look at something else, right? You can look at a company that, uh, you know, makes, uh, manufactures and sells t-shirts, right? And let's say they only make, uh, you know, 11% profit. It doesn't matter, right? Because if the t-shirt company, my example, made $6 billion in revenue, then the income would be $660 million. That would be their profit for the year. No one wants to bring in billions of dollars and be in debt and not be making money, right? So the fact that like no one is really talking about this really grinds my gears. And it's like this new thing now where like people act like these numbers and these economics don't mean anything. And, you know, we can just operate... Uh, a company in the red year over year and then people actually think the stock price should be going higher. It's laughable, right? So we're going to cut these numbers in half because if we bring a market cap to $28 billion, um, what's that? Now you're looking at like a little over four and a half times this revenue number which is more in line with where it should be, but also at the same time, because they're net income negative, it could potentially go even lower. So, you know, but conservatively, let's cut it in half. Now we're looking at like a $43 stock. And that, in my opinion, is probably where it should be, right? Is it going to go there? I have no idea. Should it go there? Absolutely, right? This stock is like, is like a $25, $30 stock. I'm surprised it hasn't even pulled back more than that as of late, honestly. But I will say, if you look at the earnings from when the company went public, you know, some of the EPS numbers were really dismal, but on the revenue side, you know, look at this, straight greens, 
one miss, and green again, right? So the, the revenues are growing. The company is beating earnings estimates on the revenue side, but of course, not really on the EPS side. And again, that, in my opinion, would raise some flags, right? This is the earnings side last several quarters, slightly coming in above estimates, not too shabby, right? Over here, if we look at our profit margin, it looks phenomenal, right? As of last quarter, look at that 42% profit margin, phenomenal. Obviously, before that, struggling a little bit. But if we switch over here annually, look at this. Consistently negative profit margin, right? Look at this, $2.5 billion. Profit margin minus two and three quarter percent. Over three and a half billion, profit margin less than minus half a percent, right? So they made a great jump there. And you would think, okay, this company gets close to four billion plus. Boom, we're net income positive. This thing's going to run to the moon. What happens? 4.8 billion, profit margin minus 14%. And why is that a red flag? I'm going to tell you why that's a red flag. Because as I just laid out in simple logic and common sense, that should have been a profitable year in 2019. And then what happens? Their absolute biggest nightmare happens. Everything gets shut down and your service, your business is basically useless. Somehow still brought in, you know, a couple of billion in revenue. Obviously profits took a massive hit. And now we switch over here as of last year. Revenue has now climbed to almost $6 billion, yet you're still not making profits. I mean, you know, even if it's by design, I wouldn't like looking at it on paper, right? If I, if I was like, you know, one of the board, well, board of directors, if I was on the board of directors for this company, I would be upset no matter what the heck is going on. But that's just me personally, right? The valuation ratios, obviously, over the years have pulled back to lower, more attractive numbers because the stock has been selling off. But look at this price to book at one point north of 30 times book value now still almost 10 times book value. Think about how many companies we looked at here that are in much, much financial, much, much better financial shape than Airbnb when we had price to book ratios of like 0.74. 1.1, right? 1.62, right? Really think about that. Go back, look at some of my videos. And here we have a company that shouldn't have this multiple and shouldn't be trading at this valuation. And it's now trading 10 times book value. That's ridiculous, right? So on paper, this stock is worth, uh, what's that? Eight, you know, $8 and change. And it's trading at 87.62, right? So a pullback could start to happen here. I will say though, profitability ratios as of the last year, you know, again, as I showed the last two quarters that this company had were absolutely phenomenal, bringing in almost, I think it was like 5 billion in revenue and having a net income of about 1.5 billion in profit off of that just in the last two quarters alone, right? But it does potentially look seasonal and it looks like the other two quarters of the year are really beating up the two best quarters of the year. And then at the end of the year, the company's net income negative, right? But I will say, you know, a lot of these numbers look really, really good. You know, we went from big negatives throughout the years, fighting to go flat, and then just having a nice big explosion here. Return on assets, 11%. Look at this, return on equity, north of 30%. Return on invested capital, north of 20%. Gross margin has basically stayed in line, pulled back slightly to 76%, but... The operating margin exploded up to, you know, a little under 42%. EBITDA, once again, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, amortization, has jumped from, you know, look at this, going from almost flat to slightly positive, pulling back to negative, having a massive pullback, and then jumping back to double-digit positivity, and now north of 42%. Net margin, as we just looked at, 42%. So, you know, on paper, there are a couple of positives here for the stock, but at the same time, we looked at the actual business and the value of the business and, you know, not to put a feather in my cap, but I would hope a lot of you can appreciate where I'm coming from and, you know, might agree with uh, my sentiment here on talking about Airbnb. But, you know, looking at stock charts real quick before I let you go, we're looking at the daily RSI uh, just turned, obviously, because it was down uh, to low 30s here yesterday on a pullback then we had a two percent pop today right so we had a little bit of a reversal here rsi north of 36 and a half could still be viewed as over uh, undervalued 
and could be a buying opportunity. Here, a little metric that some traders use. But again, I don't think there should be a pop, in my opinion, anytime soon for this company. Looks like the MACD slowly pulling back here on the daily. These just look too far away. The 50, 200 day moving average, respectively, just north of $100. I personally don't see it happening anytime soon. Switch over here to the weekly. Same thing. RSI slightly pulling back now, sub 38 and a half. Could be used as a metric to buy. In my opinion, I wouldn't use it. Getting a random phone call as this video is going on. MACD, again, slightly bleeding and pulling back. Fighting to bounce off this uh, bottom Bollinger Band. But, you know, again, in my opinion, uh, I just wouldn't be a buyer here at this level. That's just me. That's just me. I, I would personally wait for a big sell-off. And, you know, again, why buy at 87 when we can buy a 47? It's all about pricing and timing when you position yourself on a stock, especially for the long term, right? Short term, a lot of you traders out there, option traders, I know I didn't really help you out in this video, not really talking about the short term too much, but, you know, we did do a little bit of a long term analysis. And, you know, even if you are a short term trader and you were looking at Airbnb, I hope at least something I mentioned in the video, uh, you know, may potentially help you out and help you make more of an educated decision uh, moving forward. But I'm going to leave it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. You guys are awesome. Uh, just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Helps out the algorithm. Helps me get more eyes on the channel. If you like the videos I'm putting out, push the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Recently passed over 100 subscribers on the channel. You know, I, I really thought it was... You know, it's been several months, and I know we just got to 100 subs, and some people might look at that as, wow, it took you that long to get 100 subs. But also at the same time, you know, I was very unsure as to how my approach, my mentality, right, the, the way I break down these companies and, and bring the numbers to you guys, I really was unsure if even 100 people would appreciate what I'm bringing to the table. But, you know, again... It's been, you know, maybe about six, seven months and change. The bull's about to drop. You know, I jumped into a new venture and, you know, you guys came and you supported me. Now we have a community of over 100 people, right? And we're only going to keep going. So, you know, I, I do really want to say, you know, I, I really appreciate it, guys. I really do appreciate the support. And like I always say, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Uh, I do have my personal Discord that I put in the description. Um, I see some people joining and leaving, right? This is relatively a new channel, relatively a brand new Discord that I just threw up for you guys. So don't join thinking you're going to see, you know, 500 people and it's going to be, you know, chaos. We're not there yet. There's only a couple of people in the Discord, which, in my opinion, would probably be the ideal time for you guys to come in, right? Join in now when it's early, right? Let's, you know, get on a, a personal level. And, uh, you know, we'll keep it professional. We'll discuss some stocks. And if there's anything you guys want me to review, you know, I'll make a video about it. And, uh, you know, this is what I always say in the comments, whether it's in the comment section or it's in the Discord. You know, you, you have to engage here. Investments is, is very different than basically every other professional field. Right? Because everything's not necessarily set in stone. And someone who replies to you might bring up a metric that you, you weren't aware of, um, you, you might see one bullish pattern, someone else might see a bearish pattern, and, you know, it's not the fact that other people should influence your trades and investments that much, but it's more about gathering every angle, looking at every iota of information, and then making the best educated decision moving forward. That's what it's all about. So, again, I know I rambled for a bit, but listen, uh, you know, on the serious side, Thanks for stopping by. I really do appreciate the support. I am going to jump into more videos and, you know, be more active for you guys. I'm sorry I didn't make a video yesterday, but today is Tuesday, so happy Tuesday. I hope everyone got off to a decent week. Thanks for stopping by, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.